alive! I'll cover you! Um, safe to say, Ellen's comeback was a little weird. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okadowski of WeAreChange.org. A lot to get into as, of course, the world's eyes right now are on Louisville. As many people are expecting civil unrest. As the news came in that a grand jury indicted a police officer for wanton endangerment in the killing of Breonna Taylor. A very political case where people on one political side are seeing this from their own version of events and the other side is seeing it completely different. An event nonetheless that will push the divide and conquer agenda and is becoming more and more difficult to actually find out the truth about. And one of the reasons people are finding it difficult to get the truth from these kind of events is mainly because of also the big tech censorship that is happening right now. And just as Noam Chomsky said, quote, the smart way to keep people passive and obedient is to strictly limit the spectrum of acceptable opinion but allow very lively debate within that spectrum. And I do believe Noam Chomsky was very accurate, and that's pretty much what's happening right now. Where even mainstream media anchors are being censored on this very platform, YouTube, from discussing some of these billionaires that are literally fueling their money into civil discontent in this country. And I can't even say this man's name on this YouTube channel in fear of this video being taken down since already videos from Fox News, the mainstream media, are being taken down from even accurately describing what this man is doing. You know, because nothing says you're a woke company like literally protecting billionaires from any legitimate criticism. And of course, it doesn't just stop there. When it comes to a 17-year-old whose lawyers are arguing he has a clear case of self-defense, or a virologist that became a whistleblower and fled from her home country of China. Well, all of those stories, along with stories about the story of the decade, which we're going to be predominantly focusing on, all of these are examples of ideas, words, sounds that extremely powerful people don't even want you to know exist. And that's why we're going to be talking about them. And that's why my t-shirt says all my favorite channels have been demonetized or deleted. And that's why we rely on your support for our existence. And whether it's a one-time donation or just $5 a month, your support is more crucial than ever. There's ways to support us with cryptocurrencies, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, physical mail, and also most importantly for a lot of people struggling out there, ways to support us without spending a single dime that also in many instances enrich you as well. So yeah, to find out all of that information, check out wearechange.org forward slash donate. Your support is extremely appreciated. Now, when we look at our kind of establishment, especially some of the biggest figures in entertainment, in politics, in our judicial system, on the surface of all these powerful institutions, you're seeing a set of ideas of everything being hunky-dory. But in reality, if you look at the deeper elements within them, you see more of a seedy, nasty picture that, of course, many people don't want you to see. And this is, of course, perfectly represented by these three individuals that close to three decades were able to do and get away with unspeakable acts all with the assistance of these very powerful institutions. Now, mainly in part because of the internet and a lot of brave, amazing individuals coming forward, we're seeing this picture being unraveled and we're truly seeing how disgusting and rotten to the core these institutions are. And no matter how much they try to paint over them, their stench is becoming more apparent. And even just a moment ago, we got a very important update about an event that TMZ characterized as Bill Clinton meeting with Sean Penn. But now, according to new information obtained by the Daily Beast, according to them, Clinton, during this meeting, actually even secured seating for Ghislaine Maxwell. This, in 2014, 
when the cat was already out of the bag and the world knew that Jeffrey Epstein was a convicted child abuser. And then according to many insiders and the victims, she of course was the grand pimp daddy of them all that was procuring and grooming them for Jeffrey Epstein and his very powerful politicians to do whatever they wanted to. This is, by the way, the same Jeffrey Epstein that visited the White House many times in the 1990s during the Bill Clinton White House. And this is a, a big story since, of course, we had many Clinton spokespersons previously come out and say that they discontinued Maxwell's relationship with the Clintons in 2011. And now, apparently, that's not true at all as many elements from all these politicians and celebrities who say that they're completely innocent keep falling apart. There's a reason Bill Clinton had his spokesperson come out with some of these claims and not him himself. And to have a, quote, intimate dinner with a child trafficking grooming monster as described by many victims after many people already know that she's, she's responsible for this makes you really wonder what's going on here between the two, especially their numerous connections, numerous invites to the White House, and even job positions where Ghislaine Maxwell's nephew even worked under Hillary Clinton at the State Department at a highly prized position. This, along with Bill Clinton being on the Lolita Express flight logs 26 times, ditching his Secret Service? Yeah, I'm sorry, but we have a very serious scandal here that needs to be addressed, no matter how much the U.S. mainstream media wants it to go away. Again, Again, President Clinton's statement on this entire matter, saying that he had no idea this was going on, that he hadn't spoken or, or dealt with Epstein for a decade or his associates, all, all of that. That statement is pretty much contradicted by, that I would say is good reporting by the Daily Beast. Again, I'm not a full fan of the Daily Beast, but when it comes to this particular case, let's give credit where credit is due. They've been doing extraordinary work that has been accurate and way better than, of course, the mainstream media. Now, another important aspect to understand here is that we only still have a limited amount of flight logs that already show Bill Clinton on the Lolita Express around 26 times. It's important to note that these are not the full flight logs, and potentially we will be seeing all of them very soon, as we might get close to two decades of flight records from Jeffrey Epstein's helicopters and three planes after, of course, a motion put forward by the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is a story that we previously covered that we, of course, are going to be keeping a close eye on, but they are worth noting now, since, of course, we might get a lot of revelations on exactly who was on those helicopters, on those flights, if those records already haven't been destroyed or obfuscated. And now in totally separate but not really news, we have the latest announcement from Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel, who have recently come out with their political opinion about the U.S. presidential election, and everyone, including Piers Morgan, is up in arms, saying that they crossed the line, they're meddling in the U.S. elections, that this is an outright controversy, and I say, who cares, or, or gives a damn? Everyone has a political opinion in 2020, but in correspondence to this news, what happened was, Prince Andrew started trending <laughs> on Twitter since, of course, everyone said, hey, if you want to have a controversy regarding the royal family, it should be their numerous connections with child abusers, including the royal family owned pedal prince, Andrew, who, by the way, according to a new book, was obsessed with redheads and had illicit interactions with at least, at least a dozen women that were procured for him by Jeffrey Epstein. This is according to Canadian author Ian Halperin, who says that he has testimony from a bevy of women associated with Andrew and Epstein. And from the details of this case, it does look like this is a very likely scenario, as even there's other testimony of Jeffrey Epstein boasting about how he was selling Prince Andrew's secrets to the Israeli intelligence agencies. Now, again, we have to remember, this is the same Prince Andrew that documents are showing that he was the person that persuaded the U.S. authorities to give 
Jeffrey Epstein the sweetheart deal of a lifetime during his case in Florida, where, of course, he got a slap on the wrist, was able to leave jail during the day and then come back to it in his own private section of the jail only for a year when the crimes that he was accused of should have landed him in jail for the rest of his life. And according to court documents, it was Andrew who, of course, somehow persuaded the prosecution in this case from actually enacting any form of justice against the thousands of children that were procured and hurt during this case. Now, very interestingly, as all of this happening, it looks like the royal lizard queen inbred family is doing a fine balancing act when it comes to disting them themselves from this troubled old man who never grew up and keeping him a part of the family, as even recently... Queen Elizabeth proactively took action and stripped away Harvey Weinstein of his royal honor. Now, not many people know this, but Harvey Weinstein was someone that was promoted and loved by the establishment, especially Michelle Obama, Oprah Winfrey, who praised him as some kind of feminist icon, and he was an absolute goblin of a monster abuser of women. He was honored by the queen that now is taking away this kind of symbolic gesture that she gave to him. And now the world is left asking, okay, now, now do your son, who, by the way, was also granted the highest possible honor for service to the queen after, after the allegations against them came out. So the queen knew that there were very serious allegations against them that have been confirmed by many eyewitnesses, evidence, and just pure logic. And she still decided to award him with this, quote, honor, which her latest moves is leaving a lot of people asking, what the hell are you thinking, lady? And what kind of track record does this lady have, whether it's Weinstein, whether it's her son, whether it's the former prime minister that came out to be a child abuser, whether it's Jimmy Seville. Holy cow, this, this family has an absolute incredible problem when it comes to doing unspeakable things to children. Hopefully, we will get more information and details about that soon, as even Jeffrey Epstein's chef is coming forward and cooperating with an agency that has been covering up this entire case from the very beginning and has been ignoring witnesses since the 90s. Yeah, uh, you, could, you could see that I don't have a lot of optimism here, and I truly believe the most important court during these proceedings is the court of public opinion. The mainstream media is doing an extreme disservice to the American people and the people of the world, and most especially the people who have been victimized here as rags like the Express are literally running pieces trying to normalize the, quote, sexual chemistry of Prince Andrew. I'm not kidding you. This is literally an article released by the Express. This is what they decide to focus on during this entire freaking scandal is his mating chemistry that somehow needs to be glorified and escalated just when you think it couldn't get any more sick, any more perverse, any more disgusting. Here it is, the mainstream media in their full glory, as if cuties wasn't enough of a sign, here in itself aiding and abetting the biggest, most disgusting monsters in our society. So yeah, don't expect this situation to get any better from here. The business of the elites, the business of the billionaires is to keep us divided, is to keep us fighting and angry at each other. So we, of course, never see the true causes of our problems in our life. This year has been absolutely incredible for, for billionaires. Their wealth is skyrocketing. Everyone else is being screwed over, especially in major cities in the United States, especially by so-called caring governments in New York City and Los Angeles that put on the most massive restrictions on you. Meanwhile, their billionaire buddies are making money hand over fist. This is essentially what is happening here. You speak out against it, you get censored. censored. And that's why it's more important than ever for you to share these videos. If you weren't sharing these videos, I wouldn't be here. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky to still be here, by the way. You're very lucky to still be getting these videos. And if you are and you're still here and you're helping a part of this organization, I love you guys. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.